My name is Michael Fogarty. I'm 76 years old. I came to Sahaja Yoga in July of 1980 when I was 44. So we were amongst the first uh, people in the Sahaj Collective in Australia. We were looking for a, a health cure for our daughter. I guess we were looking for the help of a higher dimension than what uh, traditional medicine could offer. We went to all sorts of places to find it and ended up in Sahaj. I don't know that I'd consider myself as a seeker. I don't really remember seeking as such. I've probably been seeking for a while and struggling with, you know, general existence. I was not what you would call a seeker. You know, I was a young boy, Greek background. Uh, I was quite popular, I had a group of friends. But I was very unhappy. I was so stressed. And very happy uh, in that life. Because the work was stressed and my colleagues were absolutely from hell. I was telling myself that the more money I made, hmm, or the more successful I was in whatever it was I was doing, I'd get peace. But I never did. By the time I was 22 years of age, I had a Volvo and a Honda dealership in Western Australia. I had 30 people employed and uh, country property. So I become atheist, complete atheist. I don't want to know God. And I had this experience when I very first saw him. I just felt as if something that dropped through the top of my head, it said, this man is going to show you what you've always been looking for. And I used to be in there regularly with medical insurance and prescriptions and so on. And on one occasion, Cheryl said, uh, you're having a tough trot. And I couldn't but agree with that. And then she said, well, I, I just joined a meditation group. She said, I don't know too much about it, but uh, it could do you some good, or it certainly wouldn't do you any harm. And she's saying, oh, hello, how are you going? I'm going, oh dear, this is happening and that's happening and oh, my life is so... Oh, she said, what you need is this. And she showed me, she wants to speak to And I've gone, mm, okay, what can you say about an Indian lady? <laughs> you know? I was so down that I said, right, when? They were having meditation, this was Tuesday night, and he said, why don't you come and have meditation with us? So I was quite young then, must have been 13 year old. So the following night we went to this little house in Haberfield. And th there was a decision that one foot in a bucket would be enough, since the other one was bandaged, heavily bandaged. And uh, th then I, I was, with my glasses, I could see candles and hands moving behind me. The whole thing was fairly disorienting for me. I hadn't come seeking this, you see. I'd come in support of, of my family. So I, I was really having to orient myself in something that was pretty exotic. But they were, they were pretty excited because standing behind me, they could actually see the pulsation of my Kundalini rising up my spine. So he said, come and have a look at this, come and have a look at this. They were going, oh, feel this. And I'm thinking, what is going on? Do you feel it? I'm going, no, I don't feel anything. But I could hear them saying, I think it's there. No, it's not. It's, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I, I just sort of sat there. And then as if my, there was a click in my head. And, this, and I felt, I always knew you had to look inside. And I didn't know how to look inside. And I suddenly felt that my attention had been sucked inside. I had the most amazing experience. And I, and I went into the deepest, deepest meditation. If I start trying to think, I couldn't think of anything, and uh, all my body was vibrating. So it went for one hour, I think, at least. The only thought I could remember was I want to be like this forever. A snake or serpent dancing inside and rising up, that kundalini rising up. And um, 
just coming up the top of my head and exploding on top of my head and this amazing sensation. And it was just um, life transforming at that moment. And suddenly I realised I felt connected to everything at that point. My heart just opened and I felt this incredible joy. And I never understood what love was. You know, love was always conditioned love. But this, this was just love for, for all humanity. It was just, and it lasted for ages. <laughs> it lasted for weeks and weeks and just kept, just got me through those early days. It was beautiful. I was virtually chain smoking. But that night, I didn't really want a cigarette. Next morning, I didn't want a cigarette. Later in that day, I was having a big argument in my head about, you know, if you want a cigarette, you have a cigarette. Well, eventually I did. And it tasted foul. So I threw it away and that was it. I suddenly thought to myself, something's going on here. She talked a little bit about Sahaja Yoga and gave me a booklet of mantras and things. And just as I was leaving, she said to me, she's God, you know. And I've gone, okay. So I took the picture of Shimadaji and put it on the, the gear stick of my car and looked down at it and thought, well, who am I to say you're not? So I thought, well, I'll give you five years and you can prove that you're not. So that was my, my entrance into Sahaja Yoga. So it was more or less waiting for Mother to make a mistake, to go, aha, you're not really God. But of course she never did. I, it was sheer luck, it's sheer luck and absolute grace of Shri that my colleague who used to work with me in bank, Mrs. Damle, she had this ring of Shri Mataji on her finger. And I say, oh, now this one, she's going to the false guru, I better rescue her. So he said, well, can you at least drive me to the program and drop me off and then, you know, I'll come back home later. I said, okay, no problem, I'll drive you there. So we drive there and then, um, by chance, right out the front of the hall, which is in King's Cross, which is never any parking, just at that moment, a car pulled out right in front of the hall. And so I looked at the spot, just, just pull back in, you know, and then you can wait for an hour and then you can take me home. So I said, all right, all right, you know. So I went in the hall, sat down, crossed a little bit, sort of peeved. And then, in a short time, you know, the person said, please stand, because Shimadaji has arrived. So everyone, everyone stood up. And I was saying, well, I'm not really here for the program, I'm just a chauffeur, I'll just stay down. So I was sitting, my arms crossed and everyone's sort of standing up. And I was sitting there and then all of a sudden I just felt this huge pressure, like you know, when someone's really looking at you in a sort of a way. And I, and I, and I turned and she only had walked down the hallway and she'd paused at the aisle where I was and she was looking down the aisle at me. And then when I established eye contact, I can still remember it felt like Maybe I was enamoured, I don't know, but I didn't actually think about it. And she was, she was like a perfect, the most perfect person I'd ever seen. And I kept, and she, and I, I, I was thinking, oh, this is what I need. I need the perfect mother. And I felt absolutely in love with her. And my brother was sort of pulling my shirt saying, that, sit down, sit down. So I sat down and then he put his hand above my head and said, look, you know, it's really strong, you got it, you got it. I was saying, I got what, I got what? He said, your realisation, he said, it's happened just like that. Whether I accepted who Sri Madhati was then, I don't know, but I suppose when you have that sort of experience, it's, it's, very, um, it's very strong and it has a very strong effect on you. You, you, can't, you can't deny it then, you know, when you have that feeling of absolute joy. And, uh, well, that's what it is. It's just absolute joy. You know, you just can't get out of it. Just agreed because nobody had actually said. None of the people had ever looked at. You know, and they never even talked about such sensible, common sense things. I didn't hear the lecture. I didn't hear anything. I just the only thing come in my mind is, Mother, I love you. And then I was just in love. <laughs> I was completely euphoric for so many weeks. I went deeply, profoundly thoughtless, just incredibly, incredibly in another space. I think I felt, I probably felt peaceful, I must have, uh, and maybe I felt thoughtless, I don't know, but I just knew that was it. At the end of the lectures, you know, Shri Mataji says, and may God bless you. And I used to say, what God has to do with Mother, you bless me. My experience of Mother up to that point had been the photographs, head and shoulders, and her tapes. It took me uh, 
five years to meet uh, Shimataji. I had this image of her being someone like Boadicea, maybe six foot tall and, you know. I just remember my kundalini just took off. I felt my heart, the spirit just sparkled. And there was the goddess. When I went to her feet, there was this hurricane huh? of vibrations just shot up the back, up my spine. And it was just like rigid power. I felt like coming out of her head was a spiral, <laughs> just like that, like the universe was in her head. Before I remember when we first met her in, in Mumbai, she actually said to us, you think this is the first time you have met me? It's not. How do you know my name? Because we never met. She said, I know I met you a long time before. I, I met you before, right? I was waiting for you to come. So it's, I know who you are. I know what you are. I know everything about you. I introduced Matthew and she said, ah, yes, I know him. He's worked with me before. <laughs> I said to Kerry. So she started telling about my family, my life and did I really hear that? When she looked at me and said, nice to see you again, and I've gone. I was happy that there was eye contact, but I'm thinking, again? I don't. <laughs> My whole impression about the humanity changed. It is a very beautiful world to live. <laughs> I remember I prepared my breakfast, I was sitting at the table, and I was listening to a tape of her talking. It's one of those early talks from, from London. And I still remember her words. She said, this is what you have been seeking for all of your lives. Take it, it is yours. And the people around me, they saw the transformation in me. I didn't see, but they see it. And they say, what are you doing? What are you doing? And all my colleagues, they become surgery. My family becomes surgery. They remember my mother, she said, what are you doing? I want to see this lady. She went to Shimadaji and she said, Saksha Jagdamba, why don't you tell me? I didn't know Shimadaji was Jagdamba. <laughs> and I remember <laughs> I, I pushed the muesli across the table and just fell onto the table and I just sobbed because I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt this was it.